All right, what's up, my friends? Welcome. Complete set review in a straw. The Crimson Vow. Every single card. Constructed. Limited. We did white, blue, black, red, and green. It means time for multicolor. Anything you missed on YouTube, go watch that. Watch my 10 new brews next week on Thursday. Go to coolstuffinc.com. Read my article about 10 new brews on Friday. Bronze and Mythic starts after that. Um, yeah, after this set comes out. Whatever. Look for that, too. Tons of cool stuff happening. Follow the stream. Follow me on YouTube. Follow me. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all the things. Hit all the buttons. You're all freaking great. It is multicolored card time. Let's jump right into the fray with Ancient Lumber Knot. Oh my god, Becky. Green, black, two. Tree Folk. Door and the Siege Tower. Say what? It's a 1 4. Each creature you control with toughness greater than its power assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. So it's effectively a 4 4 for 4, um, which is already good. There's sort of like a. A big booty theme in Golgari in the set. Um, there's like a, 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 a 113 creature versus some like two sixes and stuff. Uh, so obviously kind of like the payoff for that. But most importantly, this is just a good card. This is just a 4 4 for 4. It's a totally reasonable card, limited. Um, only counts things you control. And it also won't ding you. If you have a 3 1, it's not a 1 1 now, like Dora and the Siege Tower would do. So. Super cool card. Um, it's also cool to note that for cards like the 1-4 Archer, which have Train, it still has one power. So you can keep training it up, making it bigger and bigger and bigger, which is kind of cool. It's a good card. Good card, good limited card. Not playable constructed, but good limited card. Angie, made of Dishonor. Uh, Rakdos, 4 mana, 4-5. So pretty good sizing, honestly. Whenever it, or 1-1, Whenever Angie and or one or more other vampires enter the battlefield, under your control, make a blood token. Two mana sacrifice, another creature, or blood token. Each opponent loses two life, and you gain two life. So, limited honk and chonker. Uh, total limited bomb. Total limited bomb. Um, four, five, or four is already good. It makes a blood token. Turns all your blood tokens into, into drains. Just like super, super good limited card. Constructed. Not really. I'll format a 4-5 with some limited values. Not super great. But excellent, 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 um, excellent, excellent limited card. Super, super great. Rare for your uh, for your Rakdos deck. Making blood, dishing it out, doing all the good things. Good draft card. Up next is Blood Tithe Harvester. A 2-drop. A 3-2. Vampire. Comes in play, makes a blood token. It's already phenomenal limited card. Uh, you can sacrifice it. And target creature gets minus X, minus X on the turn. Where X is twice the number of blood tokens you control, only as a sorcery. So, this card has the mana cost to be possibly viable in, in standard as a 3 2 that makes a blood token. Kind of weird because, like, you don't often want to sack your creature to kill your opponent's stuff, but it can do that, which is an option for sure. So, reasonable card. Funny, it's better in constructed than the uh, Angie is, but worse in limited because it's just like a 3 2 with some extra bonus text on it. Good card, good limited card. Possible constructed if it was like a, a vampire blood token deck, but not super exciting. Um, great limited card, though. Good stuff. Up next is Brine Comber. Now, it's important to note, if you're only limited, that very, very typically every set has one gold uncommon for each color pair. And that uncommon will usually tell you what that color combination wants to be doing. It's called a signpost uncommon. So, for example, Lumberknot says, hey, big booties are great. That means that the Golgari mechanic is big booties. You know, um, Blood Tithe Harvester. Hey, Blood Tokens are great. That's the mechanic for vampires. So for Azorius, we have white, blue, and one for a 1-1 one, one spirit. When it enters the battlefield or becomes target of an aura, create a flying spirit token. So clearly the blue-white mechanic is all about disturb. So it's all about casting cards from your graveyard and playing spirits and things like that. So pretty cool card here. It's a 1-1 one, one and a flyer for, for, for uh, three mana. And then... If it dies, it comes back as Brian Bound Gift, which uh, is basically the exact same thing. So whenever it comes to, whenever it comes to the battlefield or becomes target of spell, it's all the same thing. So just the same text on an aura. So a little extra card advantage. Not like extremely exciting, but certainly, you know, we're casting cards in our graveyard a few times. Making a few, if this thing makes like one or two tokens, you're in pretty, pretty good shape. So solid card. The disturb cost is also very cheap, which is cool. So just a solid card. Nothing insane, but just a very, very solid uh, solid Azorius card. Child of the Pack is your Gruel Uncommon. We have a 4 mana 2-5, so pretty good body. And uh, 4 mana to make a 2-2, two -two, which is great, because obviously you can make a 2-2, two -two, say go, turn it to Knight, which is great. So good Werewolf card. Backside is Savage Pack Mate, 
a 5-5 trample that gives all other creatures you control plus 1 plus 0. This is a bomb uncommon. Uh, just an absolute bomb uncommon. Uh, super, super powerful. Wins the game by itself. Pretty hard to kill. Got a big butt. It's a good one. It's a good one. Solid, solid card. Up next is Doritha. Vengeful Victim. This card is cool. I don't know what to make of this card. Blue, white for a legendary spirit 4 4 flyer. Two mana 4 4 flyer. Whenever it attacks your blocks, sacrifice at the end of combat. So obviously that's a pretty big downside. And then it has Disturb. So on offense, this is like, a, you know, a, a Boro Charm, basically. You play it, nug him for four, and then it dies. On defense, it's hard to attack into this thing. It's just like kill your attacking creature, basically. And then the Disturb part is basically gives the creature the Geist of St. Traft ability where you get to make a 4-4 tap and attacking whenever it attacks. Um, a very powerful ability, but obviously one that's not, you know, it's a little eggs in one basket kind of card. But it's the backside of this. You've already like dealt four damage. You've already like used it in some way. The raw stats are off the chart here. The question becomes like what deck wants this card and what deck can use this card. Um, this card's not quite Geist St. Trap, but Geist St. Geist St. Trap is a phenomenal magic card. So super, super cool card. Um, I'm not sure what exactly you do with it. You know, is it an aggro card? Is it a more defensive card? Um, do I care more about the front or the back? I'm not really sure. Uh, but it's definitely a really cool card. Definitely a really cool card. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Up next is Edgar, Charmed Groom. No, no awards. We have a 4 mana 4 4, Vampire Lord. And whenever it dies, it gets transformed. Okay, well, what's transformed into? Turns into Edgar Markov's Coffin. Legendary artifact. Beginning of your upkeep, make a 1 1 vampire token with lifelink. And put a bloodline counter on Markov's Coffin. Then if there are three, more blood, four, three, more, three or more blood. <laughs> then if there are three more bloodline counters on it, remove those counters and transform it back into Edgar Charm Groom. So this card is rather powerful. However, it is just a 4 4 for 4, and it's the Lord. So. It's the kind of card where, you know, does your vampire deck really want a four-mana Lord of Atlantis? Eh, not really sure. It is super cool that, like, it dies, makes some tokens, comes back. That's pretty good, you know, and there are lifelink tokens as well. So it's a good grindy card. It honestly feels more relevant for just, like, the being a very sticky 4-4 than being an actual Lord. Although the Lord thing does come into play with the actual uh, tokens as well. So this feels to me more like a, a Siege Rhino kind of card than a like Lord of Atlantis kind of card. Don't think you need to play a bunch of random vampires to make this card good. It is a very, pretty reasonable card by itself. However, of course, not so good against uh, Fading Hope. Getting Unsummoned or Exiled and so on and so forth. Uh, yeah, more of a standalone card. Definitely, definitely a cool card. Definitely a cool card, though. Um... I don't think it's overtly powerful, but it's pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable. I like it. It's a cool card. It's a cool card. Moving on to Ruth, Tormented Prophet. It's a trap. I'm not going to get me this time. All right. I feel like basically every set, there's some cool is it creature that cares about spells or whatever. And I'm always like, that card's so cool. You know, Adelie's the Cinder Wind, whatever. There's one in every set. And uh, I'm not getting trapped this time. So we have a, a 2 4 for, for 3 here. It says, whenever you would draw a card, instead exile top two cards of your library, you may play those cards this turn. That's pretty good. So the idea here is basically, even with out playing any card draw or anything like that, every draw step, you just draw two instead of one. As long as you get, you just got to play them right now. That is really good. You know, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Um, the problem is what blue-red deck wants to play a 3-mana 2-4 um, that has this effect? Is this, is this for a burn deck? Is this for a control deck? Is this for... It has to be aggressive because you have to, you have to play the cards this turn. Like, you don't actually draw cards anymore. So, you only get to exile cards. There's no cards in your hand, but you can play two spells a turn in theory. So, it's more, it has to be more of like an aggressive deck or a prowess deck or something like that. Um, cards like Consider are pretty cool because you can like draw two off of it. But is that even good? I don't really know. I'm certainly gonna play, gonna build this card, build around this card for sure. But um, 
it just it's a wild one. I don't know. It's a wizard. Uh it is good against Narset. That is true. That is true. But yeah, um, it's a cool card. I'm gonna build around it. But my gut tells me that this card will not be a part of any competitive deck. And honestly, I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong because I always love these Izzet cards and they're always bad. So I feel like I'm trying to like reverse psychology the universe right now and be like, oh yeah, it's a trap. I, you, you finally got me. I'm finally not going to fall for it. And it actually is really, really good, but we'll see. We'll see. And then uh, as a combo piece, yeah. I mean, honestly, it could be a combo piece for sure. Some rituals, stuff like that. I could see, it, you know, it's it's a pretty cool mechanic, honestly. You know, um, turning all your draws into draw twos is pretty sweet. So, uh yeah, card's cool. I'm I, I I just think it's not that good, but we'll see, we'll see. Hope I I really hope I'm wrong on this one. I really really hope I'm wrong on this one. And then in limited, this card's awesome. Um, I wouldn't play it on turn three most likely, but it does seem like a very powerful card in limited. Very powerful card in limited. Moving on to Gr Grolnock the Omnivore <laughs> with Frog Monday. Uh, there's a lot of frogs pretty lately, honestly. Uh, we have a four mana Simic rare. It's a three three. Whenever a frog you control attacks, mill three cards. Not a lot of frogs floating around, not going to lie. Whenever a permanent card is put into your graveyard from your library, exile it with a croak counter on it. A croak counter. Okay. You may play lands and cast spells among cards you own in exile with croak counters on them. Finally, finally, Wizards of the Coast finally comes through and gives us the croak counter support that we really needed. Thank you, Wizards of the Coast. Not enough croak counters in my life, you know? So, yeah, I mean, obviously this card is okay. It's a good limited card, obviously. It's a very good limited card. But the reality is that you're playing a 3-3 for 4. You're not playing many other frogs probably so you attack with this they can just block it or kill it or whatever um it's just not that good folks i'm sorry it's a cool card the art's good um love the hand or the arm hanging outside the mouth sure but yeah i don't know whatever i'm just gonna move on here good limited card it's fun it's amusing up next is helena and elena partners gruel four drop Two three first strike reach. Beginning combat on your turn. Put a a put X plus the most encounters on another dark creature you control, where X is their power. That creature gains haste on the turn. Uh, bard class, yes, bard class. I know. Um, insane limited card, just like busted limited card. Constructed, not so much, not so much. It's two three for four. Requires you have a creature in play. It's not a very good card. Uh, <laughs> they're gruel friends. That's great. That's great. Um. But yeah, just, uh, I don't know, just not that great, you know? Like, it's just too small. Just too small. I don't think it does anything. And the thing is, like, in what, uh, and it's important to note, this can't target itself. It's on another. If it can target itself, we're off to the races. We're off to the races. This card's awesome. But the, the fact that this needs another creature in play to do anything, and then... Even then, still, it's a two-three that dies. It's just not super exciting. I don't know. What, I don't know what deck would want this card. Bar class, besides bar class, uh, doesn't really have a home. It's just not great. It is not great. But I do think that uh, this card is insane and limited, and it's also a pretty cool card. So I'm down. I'm down. Moving on to Kaya Geist Hunter. Black white one three loyalty. Creatures you control gain death touch on the turn. Put a plus one plus one counter up to one target token you control. Plus one. Minus two. Plan a turn at one more tokens will be made created under your control. Twice that many tokens are created instead. Minus six. Exile all cards from all graveyards. Then create a spirit token with flying for each card exile of its ways. Is there really like any token support? You know, like... Calvi and Kaya was already kind of eh. This card's also kind of eh. Um... You know, it, the problem is this card requires so much from other cards to even be reasonable. Um, this card does essentially nothing by itself. And it costs three, but we play it. We got to plus it. And now I have a four loyalty Planeswalker, I guess. But uh, yeah, give me the OG Thermatikaya, please. This one kind of stinks. 
This one kind of stinks. Not really about it. Treasure tokens, maybe, maybe for sure, but yeah, not really about it. And then in limited, I like it limited, honestly. Maybe you took try and build the ultimate limited, but yeah, not super exciting. Not about it. Markov Purifier, Orzob, three mana for a two, three lifelink. It's a pretty good body. Feeding for instep, if you gain life this turn, you may pay two. If you do, draw a card. Signpost, put it in the ground. Uh, if you're playing the black, white life gain deck, this card's awesome. If you're not playing the black, white life gain deck, this card's awesome. Attack with it. Pay two. Draw a card. Card's great. Great limited card. Constructed, no, but great limited card. Great limited card. Mars Markov Waltzer. Everyone just freaking loves to dance in this set. Freaking loves to dance. I can't dance. I want to see more of my dancing and turn my cool stuff into it next, uh, next Monday. 1-3 uh, Flying Haste for 4. Not a great rate. Bidding combat your turn. Up to 2 card creatures you control. Each get plus 1, plus 0 oh until end of turn. So you can target itself. And then it has to target something else. It can't target itself twice. So it's a 2-3 Flying Haste that pumps a different creature. This is a fine limited card. It's not super exciting, but it's a pretty good curve topper. It's fine. It's certainly reasonable. You can also, like, just spread them out, make your two drops, push through, attack for one in the air. It's a good limited card. It's a good limited card. It works. Good. Pretty cool to learn also. That's fair. It's pretty cool to learn, uh, learn enabler too. It's good. It's a good limited card, but nothing, nothing insane. Just a reasonable card. Odric Bloodcursed. 3 mana for a Boros 3-3 Legendary Vampire Soldier. Oh, man, he got bit. Oh, he got bit. It's a bad, it's a bad day. It's a bad day. When Odric Blood Turst enters the battlefield, make X Blood Tokens, where X is the number of abilities from among Flying, First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Hex, Hex Haste, Hexproof, Instructable, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, found among creatures you control. There will be blood. Uh, this card kind of sucks. Limited, great. Just 3-3 three, three upside, awesome, but... Why? Yeah. What have they done to my boy? Uh, yeah. Doesn't have a single keyword on it either. I know, right? Yeah. All right, we're going to pass on this one. Old Rustin. 3-mana four, three, three mana Golgari for a 1-4. Got that big butt. And it's Battlefield or the beginning of your upkeep, mill a card. If a land card is milled, make a treasure. Creature card is milled, make an insect. Non-creature, non-land, make a blood token. I mean, great limited card. Just accrues resources all the time. Don't think it's really good enough for uh, for constructed because a uh, three mana one four, we're not really enabling or paying off that hard. Um, the effect is kind of cool, um, and if it made it so whenever you milled a card, if you hit one of these things, then it triggered. Like, it wasn't part of the, the whole ability by itself. It'd be pretty good. But all in all, just, like, kind of mopey and constructed. But definitely a really cool limited card for sure. Olivia, Crimson Bride. Here comes the bride. Six mana for a 3-4 Flying Haste. Mythic. So, a little small. A little small. When Olivia, Crimson Bride attacks, return Dark Creature card from your graveyard. To the battlefield, tapped and attacking. It gains, when you don't control a vampire, a legendary vampire, exile this creature. Um, pretty powerful card if you can hit with it, but it's got to hit. That's the hard part. You're resolving your six mana, three, four flyer, and then having it live through the attack is kind of a tall order. Uh, but very powerful if it works. Kind of a cool, like, sneak attack kind of card where, like, if you were to, like, reanimate this or sneak attack this, you could, like, get something else too. So wouldn't be surprised if this card just, like, showed up in other formats and, like, some weird reanimator deck or something like that. But it's a lot. It's a lot. The trick is, uh, that is true. If you target a legendary vampire, uh, it will never go away because it is a legendary vampire. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's all right. Nothing, nothing super exciting. Just fine. You can sword minus three. That is true. But you also have to get a card in the graveyard too. So like, eh. It's flashy, but not super exciting. Good limited card, obviously unbeatable. Uh, Runo Stromkirk. Three mana Demir for a one four flyer. When it enters the battlefield, put up the one target creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. Beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may reveal a card. If it's a creature card of mana value 6 or greater, transform. That's a tall order. Flips over into Crothus, Lord of the Deep. A 3-5 Kraken Horror. Whatever's flying. Whenever it attacks, create a tapped and attacking token. That's a copy of another target attacking creature. If that creature is an, a Kraken, a Leviathan, an Octopus, or a Serpent, 
Instead, create two of those tokens instead. Jeez. This entire card reads like a freaking Xbox achievement. You have to look like, okay. So, you got to go to the first level, right? And then you got to get the, the six mana thing. Then put it on top of your deck somehow. First, get it in the graveyard. Then, we got to go and reveal it and have it live. Then it lives. Great. So, you got to untap. And we got to get the thingy. Now, we got the Lord of a Deep. So, you got to get a Kraken in play or a Leviathan or an Octopus or a Serpent. Then attack with the thingy and the thingy and target it safely. And your opponent's not even dead yet. And then it works. Yeah. Fun card, but uh, not really for uh, not really for constructed. Although limited, I mean, a one four flyer over three with upside is pretty reasonable, honestly. So, yeah, sure. Moving on to Sigardian Paladin, four mana for a four four. Great. As long as you put one or more plus and plus one counters on a creature of his turn. It has Trample and Lifelink. So, this is your signpost on common for, uh, for Slesnia. Very, very good card on rate. Three mana to give a creature you control with a plus and counter on it. Trample and Lifelink on a turn. So, you have to have this card, you're probably going to win. Just a super, super busted limited card. Um, it's really, really, really good. Constructed? No. Limited? Yes. Bomb. Bomb, bomb, bomb limited card. Skull Scab. I'm calling this as my sleeper for uh, for uh, for the multi card section. The multi card section is a little weird. There are no cards that really jump out as like really really good. And the card that I chose for best in show, I actually wanted to choose as my sleeper, but I just couldn't find a better card for the best in show, so it had to be best in show. So Skull Scab is a two mana two two with exploit. Whenever you whenever a creature you control exploits a non token creature, create a two two black zombie creature token. So Sort of like an exploit lord. I do think that this card isn't particularly incredible, but I do think there's going to be a good blue-black exploit deck. Um, I think that between Grafted Identity, between the Decay tokens from the last set, between the new uh, blue Counterspell Mystic Snake Exploiter, which I think is one of the best cards in the set, this card just plays. This card just plays, you know? It does make it a real zombie, too. It's not, it's not, not a decayed zombie. Um... It's important to note that it doesn't exploit. I'm sorry, it can't exploit tokens, which kind of stinks. But you got to fill the deck out. This card seems reasonable. I can see it seeing play. I'm not going to lie. Slim pickings here, honestly, in the, the multi-card section for Constructed. Is, um, this one's a little bit of a stretch. In limited, phenomenal card. It's great, but we'll see. We'll see. And uh, moving on to our next card. Best in show. Best in show. And again, I wanted to see my sleeper card. I wanted to see my sleeper card, but I couldn't find a better card best in show, so that's what it ended up being. Torin's Fist of the Angels. The mana for a 2-2. It has a training ability. If you cast a creature spell, you make a 1-1 green and white human token with training. This is essentially, you know, like a Monastery Mentor type effect, but for creatures. And that's really, really good. Um, you guys have with this play creature, make a token, play a creature, make a token. These are not just 1-1 one, one tokens also. These are training tokens. Very, very easy to make these 2-2s two on the attack, which is pretty good. Um, so, it's only a 2-2 two, two, two by itself, but once again, it is training it so you can, it can grow. Um, card just seems pretty sweet to me. It's a human, which is kind of nice. It makes humans as well. Thalion, friends, you know. Um, the card just seems solid to me. It seems like a solid card. Again, this is a little bit, you know, slim pickings. Realistically, it just wasn't a card that jumped off the page at me um, for a multi-card card. But I think this card is super sweet. Um, is it viable with modern humans? Probably not. Probably not good enough there. But it's the kind of card where you're going to untap with it and make like three tokens and be really, really happy. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm not super convinced on this one. Again, I wanted this to be the sleeper, but I didn't really feel like there was a good enough card for sleeper. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Definitely very speculative. You know, I do the awards by color, and the multicolored section here is pretty thin as far as, like, heaters go. So, we'll see. If you think I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the chat. Fire away. Fire away. You know, I'm just doing what I can, all right? Just doing what I can. And limited cards phenomenal, obviously. Cards phenomenal. Two cards left. My preview card, Vile Spawn Spider. And a uh, great limited card here. Blue-green for a 2-3. Reach. Bait of your upkeep, get the middle card, awesome. Sack it and pay four, exile, or whatever, um, not exile, uh, sack it and make a insect token for every creature card in your graveyard. 
awesome. Um, super good card. Honestly, bomb limited card. And they can see playing constructed. Probably, honestly. I mean, it's a payoff, it's an enabler, and the rate's pretty good. So super, super solid card. I like this card a lot. I'm sure I'll play it in constructed at some point. Will it be good? We'll see. But very, very solid card. Very, very solid card. Our last card, which also is close to both Sleeper and Best in Show, I'm just not really sure about it, is Wandering Mind. The mana is it for a 2-1 flyer. Enters the battlefield, look at the top six cards of your library, reveal a non-creature, non-land, and put it into your hand. So this is a 2-1 flyer that draws a card, but it always draws a spell, and it always draws a good spell, um, which is pretty good. Honestly, just pretty good. The problem is what spell heavy deck wants like a rando 2-1 flyer? You know, like not really sure. Yeah, flying auger bowl is so it's actually, it's actually gonna hit though. If it costs like two, obviously it'd be insane if it costs two. Uh but yeah, definitely uh a powerful card, great limited card. You ever hit this card's insane. But you know, what are you cutting from Is it Dragons for this card? You know, like, what are you, what are we doing here? So, uh, six cards is a lot. You should hit most of the time. Some sort of Delver deck, maybe, for sure. Like, a blue-red Delver deck, possibly. It's just a good card. It's just a good card, honestly. Trick and Mage, Trick and Mage, sure. You know, just like a reasonable body that draws a card, also. Um, just pretty good. Just pretty good. I don't know where it goes. I don't know what it wants. Wasn't willing to put it as a, you know, uh, an award. But, yeah, cool art, too. Cool art, too. That's it. That's a multicolor. Not a very big multicolor section. Not in, uh, only, uh, only uh, a small smattering of cards here, but that's it. Let's rock and roll. We got colors is left as our last one left. Let me know how wrong I am. This is the co section I'm least confident in in my, in my awards. So let me know how wrong I am in the YouTube comments. Like, comment, subscribe. Look for the other colors on YouTube. Twitch folks follow. And uh, I'll see you in colors. We finish up our set review for Innistrad Crimson Vow.